story about that. When I first started in the martial arts business, um, I didn't have any students, and I wasn't one of those uh, martial artists that take you know, 10 students from maybe his previous instructor and start a school. I had nobody. And you know, I was sitting in 3,200 square foot, nice school, brand new, and no students. So I paid five people to work out with me. I actually paid them to work out with me. And people say, how did you start in the martial arts business? I say, minus five students. <laughs> and that's the truth. And then once I got five students, I was even. You know, and then I went from there. So you, know, you just have to start somewhere. Uh, you have to have students to have a business. And you only function as a school owner. Uh, you have only one function, and that is get students, keep students. That's your only function. Get students, keep students. Everything else that you do has to support that effort. Everything. From your business cards, to your brochures, to your flyers, to your door hangers, to your TV ads, radio ads, whatever, whatever you do, it all has to support that one thing. And every class that you do in your class has to support that. And I used to, and I'm sure we all have, I used to jump at every opportunity I could, I could get at. Hey, uh, I have a Girl Scout troop. Would you uh, do a little demonstration? Come in, do a little demonstration. Hey, I got a Boy Scout troop. Can I bring them over to your school? Here's my thought. Will it get students, keep students, make money? If it does two out of three, I do it. If it does one out of three, I don't do it. I don't do it. Just my rule, OK? Because I'm tired of doing stuff for nothing. Now, I, nothing does not mean that you must get paid. But can I get students from this event? Can I keep students? Can I retain students from this event? If those two are, are there, I do it. If make money and get students are there, I do it. You know, so it has to be two out of three. Um, I don't know how you have found Boy Scout you know, coming into your school Boy Scouts. I've never gotten a student from that. They're already involved in the Boy Scouts. I mean, so it's not going to be get students. Okay? Um, if you have a bunch of students that are in that particular troop, might help you retain, hey, that's my instructor, that's my teacher, you know? And so that might be some retention. You ever make money at it? No. Do I do any Boy Scout things? No. Do I like the Boy Scout? Sure. Do I think it's a great organization? Sure. It's just not, from a business point of view, worth my while to do. So that's how I look at everything. Will it hit those three things? Your only reason for being is get students, keep students. That's it. We've all tried newspaper, TV, radio, and direct mail. I know we've all tried that. Or if I said, who tried this you know, in this room, hands would go up for all of those. But if I ask 10 school owners what works best for you, 11 are going to say, word of mouth. Is that true? Everybody raise your hand if word of mouth's the best. OK, so we're, we're all in agreement. So I cut out newspaper, TV, I don't do any. My advertising budget is? Zippo, zero, nada. I don't do any, OK? But I have learned how to foster word of mouth. And these are some of the ideas. So I want to show these to you. Okay, when I send you information or when I hand you information, it looks like this. I'm sure that none of you have something like that. This is very inexpensive to do, guys. Very, very inexpensive. I'm going to tell you where you can get these. You can get these from a company called uh, Folders.com, I believe. But I'm going to give you an 800 number, so don't worry about it. And I have no ties to them whatsoever. Okay? This is from their overruns. See, they, they're a company that prints folders for major corporations. And they make a lot of blue folders, or red folders, or green folders. And then whatever they don't print, they put it in their bargain basement. And then I call them up and say, hey, send me uh, 200 of those blue ones. And that's how I get these. They're very, very inexpensive to get. This fits exactly in an 8 by 10 envelope. So when it lands at your customer's house, they open it up and they go, hey, man, this is pretty, pretty professional. Hey, let me see what they got here. And this is, uh, here is that brochure, as a matter of fact. And you can recognize the picture on that. The picture is right there. That's from the NAPMA package. If you guys aren't using the NAPMA package, you're, you're wasting your money. You've got to use it. You've got to open it up. You've got to read it. You got to do something with it. So this is what I do. I am a believer in not hiding my price. I charge $109 a month for martial arts for a child, ages 6 to 10. That's what I charge. 
why should I be embarrassed or why should I try to say, well, we'll talk about it when you get here. They don't want to talk about it when they get here. If I send them this and they come in, they're ready to spend $109 a month. I don't have to worry about it. I already qualified them. So I am not for hiding my prices. Now some of you are, and if you want to stay that way, that's fine. I'm not saying that it's wrong. A lot, of, a lot of people, and I was one of them, that would say, well, we have an introductory course for $49, two weeks of lessons and a free uniform. You know, and then when they came in, I said, well, it's $100 a month. You know, I, I don't do that anymore. I just tell them up front, it's $109 a month. I have no problem getting it in my area. I have no problem whatsoever. Um, I raise my price almost every year, methodically. People expect it. If you're not doing it, you're crazy. People expect it. Everything's going up. Your food's going up, your clothing's going up, and if most of you have publisher right now, because you can see the CDs uh, that Natma sends you, uh, I, I actually make this on publisher, I burn a CD, I take it over to Kinko's and say, make me 100. I put several brochures on a CD, and I just take it over there, the pictures come out absolutely perfect. The second thing that I use is the mini flyers, Now I don't have an example of one, I didn't bring it with me, but they're little mini flyers that are in your package. It's the five by, or the four, three by five ad that's in there. And what I do with those is I put whatever my offer is, free class, and I take them to Kinko's, and I have them padded in 25 and with a cardboard back. Okay, I take those, and this is how I built my cardio program. So for those of you whose cardio program went down or you don't have one, here's the way to do it. I took the cardio ad, that five, little three by five, I took it to Kinko's, padded it 25 to a pad, made about 50 pads. And it offered a free class. Come in, get a free class. And it had, did have my price and it had a special offer. It's $59 and I'll give you free gloves for the first month, okay? I went around to every beauty shop, every nail place, every tanning salon that I could find. And that's where I left them because that's where women hang out, right women? Okay. So I went to a beauty shop and here's what I said to the operators. I said, hey, if you'll put one pad at your station and give your customers free classes, you come to class for a week free. Now that's what you want because they'll be talking about your class. They go, hey, I went to the greatest kickboxing class here. Why don't you go take a free class? Oh, it was great. Oh, I'm still sore. Oh, it was terrific. Okay, and guess what? This is true numbers. I had 100 students in 100 days. I had 100 students in 100 days. But I covered every beauty shop, nail, and tanning salon within three to five miles of my school. I covered every single one. Some of them wouldn't let me do it. Many of them did. The same exact little pads I am now using to build my little ninjas class. I take it to kinder cares. I take it to places that do birthday parties. I take it to you know, those kind of places. I have little ninjas and I have my price and we, we teach eight skills, you know, and I, I do the same thing. Hey, can I leave a pad of 25? And oh, by the way, when the moms come to pick up their kids, why don't you give them a free kickboxing class while you got it? Here's a pad of those two. And that's, that's one of the best ways that I have found to do it. Now, I do have some kids that work for me during the summer and I put them out to do that. So I'm not saying that I actually physically have to ride around in my car and do all this because you know, I, I want to work myself to death. But I'm telling you that, that that truly does work. As you can see, Mr. Foxman's approach to running a school is quite unique. While his advice may not be for everyone, he is living proof that there is more than one way to achieve success without selling out. Now our next guest is an up and coming entertainer, a devoted family man, and a world class martial artist. In fact, he's considered one of the greatest open forums competitors in the history of the sport. Now, my members, please enjoy the extreme forum drills of the one and only Mike Chat. Straight line theory. Everything comes out in straight lines. Traditionally, I'm, uh, if you didn't already know, I'm from a traditional Okinawan uh, Shoiru background. So we're taught, you know, extremely low stances, punch down into the center of the body. For uh, extreme type of forms, um, what we found is to make your techniques look cleaner, especially when you start moving uh, you know, more rapidly as you go from you know, one or two technique combinations to 10 or 15 technique combinations. The idea is to keep everything on one straight line as much as possible, with certain exceptions for different types of techniques, but your chops and your punches are going to remain on one line to uh, keep, that, uh, 
Keep those arms, okay? So from here, bring your arms out. This is gonna be your line. So that way when you chop and punch, it will appear as if one technique replaces the other. If you notice that here, you chop and you punch. As opposed to chambering low and punching up, it takes away from the technique, especially when you're moving very, very fast. Okay, that makes sense? So from here, this is your straight line position, okay? Secondly, tight body. Uh, stems from gymnastics and ballet. Uh, tight body, you put your hands down, does not mean tense, okay? The idea is to keep your body straight. So if you notice, if I stand up straight here, this is a straight body position, but it's not tight body. So from here, you wanna bring your shoulders back, rotate them back in this position here with the chin up, hands at the sides, create, creates a straight line vertically from the top of your head all the way down to your heels, okay? And that's the position that you want. One, for jumping, maximizing your height. Two, for rotation, maximizing the rotation uh, speed and force, okay? If you create that straight body position uh, within yourself and for your students, then it makes it much, much easier to do a lot of these maneuvers, okay? All right, so going on from there, what we're just gonna start off with is the first hand combination that will be used as the base for the extreme martial arts form, okay? You together? Let me just show you very quickly and then we'll jump right into it. So the preparation is left over right. Whenever you chop, left hand goes on the right, Okay, elbows are up, not down. From here, we're gonna spot to the left, watch first and then we'll walk through it. From here, we're gonna spot to the left, stepping out with the left front stance. Chop, punch to the left 45, you're gonna spot to the right, prepare. You're gonna chop, shift, punch to the center, uh, to the right, and then uh, spot to the center, and shift and punch, okay? Making sure that using this combination, we're not just going side to side, we're cutting the angles. Why? It's a little bit faster, instead of traditionally going left, right, and then center. Most styles, um, do you all have an eye pattern form in your style? Does anyone not have an eye pattern form? Before we start in a horse stance here, and we block, punch, block, punch, block, punch, punch, punch. You guys have that? Sure. Okay. So, same idea. Any white belt can learn this form. Now we're just changing the blocks to chops and the angles from left to right to the left corner to the right corner. Then we're going to go to the center. Okay? So, now we're just going to... Uh, uh, introduce a little bit of breathing, a little bit of yelling, and then we'll jump into it, okay? So when you breathe, make sure the breath comes from the bottom, of course, from your, your center here, as opposed to your throat. You're gonna breathe all your air out, okay? Into your chop punches. On the last punch, when you spot to the center and you step forward and punch, make sure and do a nice yell, okay? Ready? So I'll demonstrate, then we'll go through it. So from here, it looks like this. And then back, okay? Ready? You get a spot to that. Left hand prepares over the right. You're gonna step out, chop. Excellent. And punch. Good. Spot to the right. Prepare. Chop. And punch. Good. And to the center. Punch. Good. Straight forward. Excellent. And back. Targeting. Focus and precision with your moves. Making sure that when you punch out straight, you are also punching to the center. As opposed to straight out to the side. Okay? To the center right there. Got it? Ready? Spot to the left. Prepare. And go. Chop. Punch. Good. Chop. Punch. Punch. Can you guys yell a little, a little louder than that? Yes, sir. 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 Can you yell a little stronger than that? Yes, sir. sir. Okay, that's the idea. 100% from the get-go, then you'll get the full experience. Okay, so when you do the, 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 uh, the chop punches, making sure that you're not slowly, we break it down one and two. When you go fast, okay, the idea is to generate all your power into the moment of impact, okay? So that means when your body locks into a stance, the technique stops as well. You don't want to be stopped here and then throw the big punch here with no other momentum and force behind it other than your, your hand. You want to use the rotational force in your hips here and the shoulders to generate maximum power. So when you step and you spot here, you want to chop one and then drive the punch in two. Okay? Step one, two, and then you step and punch. Okay? Ready? One more time. And spot to the left. Go! Chop, punch, chop, punch, chop, punch. Yeah. So when you do the, 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 uh, the chop punches, making sure that you're not slowly, we break it down one and two. When you go fast, okay, the idea is to generate all your power into the moment of impact. Okay? So that means when your body locks into a stance, the technique stops as well. You don't want to be stopped here and then throw the big punch here with no other momentum and force behind it other than your, your hand. You want to use the rotational force in your hips here and the shoulders to generate maximum power. So when you step and you spot here, you want to chop one and then drive the punch in two. Okay? Step one, two, and then you step and punch. Okay? Ready? One more time. And spot to the left. Go! Chop punch, chop punch, chop punch. Yeah! That's in the back. Good. 
Any questions? Very simple. Okay, everyone slide back just a little bit. Let's just do a couple reps. So, in addition to you know learning these techniques and going on to the advanced levels, there's uh, there's three different parts. One, you want to work on the, the strength and flexibility for the moves. Two, you want to be able to do the, the individual techniques and the drill, okay, the whole combination. Three, how do you work on it? How do you rep it? How do you have your students do it over and over so that way it's not just, just straight repetition. Do 10 of those, you know. So here's the idea. We're going to start with this going from the left to the right to the center, then we're going to switch it. Right, left, center. Without stepping out of the stance, everything's continuous. So you're not only working on the individual techniques and the combination, but now you're working on fluidity of movement throughout the combination. Using these hand combinations, even though it's basic, we're going to use this to then lead into the kicking combinations, jump kicking, and acrobatic combinations. So that way, when you create an extreme martial arts combination, everything flows. Then when that translates into the extreme martial arts form, then you've got nice transitions, you've got fluidity of movement uh, between all your different combinations and sections. Okay? All right, ready. And back. So, now, a lot of times we'll see this. You'll be stepping forward. You want to generate momentum where? The idea is to build forward, right? So if we're going left, right, center, make sure that you're going center. I see a lot of times, chop punch, chop punch, and the stance will come out here. Well, the stance is going to the 45. The punch is going center. So where's my energy going? Some of it's going here. Some of it's going there. Redirect your focus, your momentum. Especially for when we go from this punch here to skip front kick or another combination as you have to move forward and build that momentum. You don't want to have to shift from here to there. You want to be straight here move in that straight line, okay? Okay, let's go to the end of the first combination. Right hand out, left hand forward. Now we're just gonna reverse it. So instead of going to the left, to the right, to the center, we're gonna go to the right, spot to the right, stepping forward to the right corner. Chop punch, spot to the left, chop punch, to the center, punch, yeah! oh. Excellent, chamber's high. Good, and one more time now, back to the left. Go, chop punch. Right, chop, punch. Punch, hey up. Got to end back. Any questions? So, from here, now we're just going to add the spin chop punch. So, after the chop punch, chop punch, you're going to prepare here, step to the center. It's a one, prepare, two, step. Okay, very simple. Let's walk through that. So, chop punch, one. To the right, chop punch, two. Over the hands. Good. Now, what's very important is when you teach your students how to chop, um, does anyone does anyone teach to chop from here, or to chop from the chamber, or do you prepare by the ear, or the shoulder? Ear. Ear. Okay. So does anyone prepare like this? Does anyone prepare like this for a chop? Does anyone prepare like this for a chop? Anyone prepare like this for a chop? No. Yes. Okay. So it's very important. All you do is from here, open the hands, because in taking taking all these movements and the forms to the next level, it's very, very critical to uh, critique all the, the, the minor details because in the end, when you add them all together, it, it's very, very important for the overall look of the combination. So here you step right leg to the center. You're going to chop left hand on the right shoulder because this prepares you for the next chop. This chop here, broken down, stops, but as you do it fast, it continues to pass through your target. Right hand underneath the left elbow. Elbows up. Good. Straight line here. You're going to spot first, the body follows the head. You're going to step with the left into the left forward stance and chop punching through. Okay? So, then we'll back. This is what it looks like fast, and then we'll, we'll walk through. Okay? From here. Just like that. And back. Okay? So, so down, ready, and chop punch. Chop punch. Good. Open the hands. Good. Step. One. And two. Chop punch. Good. With the right hand. Excellent. Always a reverse punch. Okay? Good. Any questions? Try it a little bit faster. Ready? And together. Spot to the left. And go. Chop punch. Chop punch. Spin chop punch. That's it. All right. So you do the chop with the left. Here. One reverse punch. Whenever you say the word spin, sometimes you know students get confused. Okay? Just two steps. Very simple. Here, over the hands. One, step with the right. Two, step with the left. Now, just adding in the spot in between will help them link the two moves, okay? So here, the hands open. It's a one step, spot, two, into the chop punch, okay? Should we walk that through one more time? Sure. Because okay, after, again, this is just a foundation, so we spend a little bit more time on this 
Then we're going to move rapidly as we go, so we're going to assume that you can already do either the basic chop punch combination or the spin chop punch. Okay? Ready? And spot to left. Go! Chop punch! Chop punch! Spin chop punch! Hey So you can do a spin chop punch here, switch, another spin chop punch, okay? Or you can uh, and use that to set up for a combination. Or this can be the end of a combination. You know, you do a nice big jump kick combination and you end with a spin punch in a stance or you end with a position on the ground. So let's just do that quickly. We'll go chop punch, chop punch, um, and we'll end on the ground. We'll spin here and we'll punch right on the ground. Okay, be careful with your knee, because it's hard for you. Okay, it's just like that. Vertical punch here, the hand comes around, and then chambers right there. Okay, ready? Together, spot to left, and go. Chop punch, chop punch, spin, and punch. Good, hand right there. So in our style, we have uh, what we call hidden movements. And so a lot of times, uh, hand positions mean, have different meanings or applications, but they're not visible. So in this sense, uh, it's just a block. You are to apply this. You block and you punch. We just don't show the block. So that's why the position is here. Okay? And some uh, some styles don't change the application. So I just want you to understand what you're doing so that way uh, you can translate that to your students. Okay, everyone up. One more time. Make sure when you hit, here's uh, just a little note on the subtle difference between one type of chamber and the other. When I come around, if I chamber here, this does not look as. Um, as strong or as threatening as if I pull back just a little bit here. Okay, it's like the difference between holding my hand here, like this, holding my hand here, right? So when you come around on the spin punch here, make sure the hand's high in the chamber here, and then drive the punch in, okay? As opposed to keeping everything straight, all right? Ready, and chop punch, chop punch, spin, chop punch, ready, go! Oh, yeah. Yeah. Excellent, good, and back. Let's just try one more for fun. So we'll go chop, punch, chop, punch, spin, punch, punch, spin, and punch on the ground. Okay? Remember, everything locks at one time. So the hand, the foot, and the knee, the shoulders rotate, the hips lock into position as you lock the punch. Okay? And then when you hit the ground, nothing moves. Ready? And go! Chop, punch, chop, punch, spin, chop, punch. Switch, chop, punch, and spin, punch. Pass! Good, and back. Okay, kids love to yell, right? Or no? Yes, sir. Okay, let them yell. So, a couple different yells. That you, in addition to the breathing, you want to do different types of yells, and that can help build the momentum of the combination, okay? Along with the speed and the techniques that you're doing. So, as we go, we start going to more difficult techniques. The yelling and the, uh, the breathing should get stronger. Short yells. Ha, ta, sa, ya, like that. Long yells, two syllables. Hi ya! That's what you do at the end of the combinations when you have this big pause, okay? So let me just hear some of these yells. Short yell from the gut all the way up. Ready? Ha! 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 ha, ha sa! Sa! Ya! Ya! Good. Long yells. Ha! Ya! Ha! Ya! Ha! 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 Spin punch. Ha! Ha! Go! Ha! Ha! Excellent. Very nice. That went up. Okay. Any questions? Okay. Let's jump right and let's, let's put this into the form. So now all we need to do is, uh, is create the beginning of the form. When you create an extreme martial arts form, um, it's almost like telling a story. You want to have a nice intro, beginning, middle, and end. Okay? And uh, use the whole performance area. So whether it's a ring for competition or a demonstration area, typically your audience is in the front. And because that's uh, uh, for extreme martial arts, most of the time people can use it for demonstrations or competition, that's what we're going to focus on. You will modify different uh, types of choreography for your audience if you have a 360 audience or audience on the side in the front as well. But if you're showcasing to judges or performance audience in the front, this is how you would set it up. Making sure that you hit all the corners doesn't mean you have to go into the corner, but you want to make sure and at least go to that direction so that way the form is symmetrical. You're not leaving any side out. In addition to that, uh, when you get to the techniques, you always want to make sure and showcase your techniques to the audience. Keeping your body to the front as much as possible. When you turn your back like this, people can't see your eyes, they can't see your face, so the intensity level goes down. They don't want to look at your shoulders, your back, and your bottom, right? So, 
Same thing when you kick. Showcase your kicks to the audience. Right leg kicks go to the right side, left leg kicks go to the right, uh, left side. Why? Because your body's open here. Right leg kick to the left side, what are you guys looking at? Right? Okay, also the back of my head. Now, that is reversed for spinning kicks. Okay, spinning crescent or spinning hook kicks. Why? Because of the range of motion in the kick. So if you're doing a spinning hook kick and you're going from the left 45 degree angle to the right 45 degree angle, and you're here, the whip is here. This is your range of motion. So if I kick right leg to the left side, where's my kick? Where's my kick? It's over here, right? Where's my audience? Over here. If I switch it and go right leg to the left side, where's my kick? It's over here. Right? Same thing with the reverse. So just a little rule of thumb there. Okay? Jump split kicks, nice. Jump split kicks, they open up here. We'll get to that later. Go to the front as opposed to the side where the audience can't see the legs. Simple things like that. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's our show. But before we say goodbye, we have some special bonus footage for you. The following commercial featuring the amazing Mike Chat was recently shot in South America, and it is way cool, so please enjoy. Until next month, I'm Rob Colasanti. Thanks for watching.
Hello and welcome to Maya's monthly instructor's video. My name is Dave Kovar. Let's get started. We're going to start out this month by talking about the teaching tip. The teaching tip this month is when placed in command, take charge. About uh, probably 10 years ago, I had the privilege of going to a Tony Robbins seminar in Cancun, Mexico. And uh, it was a great seminar. I would strongly recommend any of Tony Robbins material. But what was really interesting about this, he had several guest speakers. And one of the speakers was General Norman Schwarzkopf. Now, I had seen this guy on TV several times, as I'm sure you have. But I was totally amazed in person what a powerful communicator this guy was and his session was on leadership that was the whole theme is why he was brought in and he had a couple themes to leadership the most important one was this when placed in command take charge and if, if sometimes what happens is if a leader is put out there in front of a group of people and they don't know what they're doing what happens is the people around them tend to lose trust and faith in that person as a leader and it's hard then to get moving in any direction how that relates to the martial arts floor is if you step out and you're in front of a group of, of students especially children and it appears like you don't know what you're doing and you're not taking charge pretty soon you're losing control of that class so an example I, every class I've ever taught there's been a time in, during class where I didn't quite know what I was going to do next maybe the drill that I was doing took less time or more time I had to adjust it almost always happens but there never wants to be a time when your students are looking at you and you're going um, let me think uh, what are we gonna do now you might think that but if you're thinking that what you do is you, you have them doing something while that's going on you have them face each other